I've had this Wood Miser LT15 sawmill for a little over two years. I thought I'd do a little bit of a review and tell you some of the things I don't like about this mill. One of the most problematic things on this mill have been these adjustable legs. They work great in the beginning. It's a great way to be able to adjust the bed to get it nice and level and even. But after a little bit of use, they become not adjustable anymore. They're a weak point in the frame. When you're rolling heavy logs onto the frame, when you're moving heavy logs around, they're just, I don't think it's a strong enough of a setup the way they're made to properly support this frame. I'll show you what I think happens with them. I think what happens is over time, the bed moves as logs are being rolled around on it this metal and this metal starts chewing into the threads. After it messes those threads up, it's no longer adjustable. Originally, I had this nut cinched up all the way. I had all these nuts very tight with a big wrench. The reason it's not tight now is because the nut won't move anymore after I adjusted this, because the threads are all messed up. But if you look at this, we have this big heavy frame with these little tiny legs holding the whole thing up. Not only the frame, but the big heavy logs that are being rolled onto it. For this to be a good stable mill, I think you need to forget about the legs. Have a good solid level foundation to attach this to. If I was to ever have to move this mill and reset it up somewhere else, I would have to cut these legs off because the threads are all messed up. I can't back them out, I can't remove them. I'd have to actually cut them off. Another problem is this joint between segments. On this side, it's a very stable setup. On this side, the only thing holding it together is the friction from this bolt and this bolt on the other side. If a log hits it just right, it moves. And this is no longer even and it has to be readjusted. And that's exacerbated by the fact that I can't get these legs on both sides of it to be evenly supporting since they don't adjust anymore. If this side was built like this side, it would be much better. This side is locked into place where it can't move. If they would do something similar on that side so it was firmly locked in instead of depending on just the friction from those bolts, that would be a lot better. Another thing that gave me fits when I was first trying to level this thing I didn't notice at first, I just could not get all of these rails even until I figured out that the middle rail on each segment is a little bit lower than the outer two. It's a little lower and it's welded in a little bit crooked. I don't know if it shows up on camera, but you can see daylight. There's a gap there. I might be nitpicking a little bit with that because it's not off a lot. But once I figured out that that one was lower than the rest, it made it easier to level it. I just ignored the middle rail on each segment. The next thing is this tricycle design on the saw head. You have two wheels on this side and only one wheel on that side. When it's moving down the track, there's just so much movement in it. It's so wobbly. Even the smaller LT10 has four wheels, two on each side, and it's much more stable than this one. When you engage the clutch and start moving, the thing's just shaking all over the place. But even with that, it still makes a smooth cut. It cuts fine, but when operating it, it feels like I'm operating shoddy equipment. It's more about operator experience than it is actual performance cutting. This is the lower cost machine, but to put four wheels on it instead of three wheels would just make for a much better machine. Another annoying thing is the blade lube tank. In order to fill it, you have to remove it, then remove the hose, remove the cap, which is an awkward place. Then you have to lift this heavy, full, container up here and put it into place. It would be so much better if it just had a filler tank on the top where you unscrew the cap, pour your fluid in, and you're good to go. 
For someone who isn't very strong, this could even be impossible. Changing blades is an easy procedure. They did a nice job with these panels. It's easy access. It's a simple procedure, but there's so many little grooves and areas you have to fit the blade into. Unless you're an octopus and you have eight arms, you're going to rub the teeth against the metal at some point when you're getting the blade in. Sometimes if there's a little bit of a rough cut, I wonder if I may have nicked a tooth getting the blade in. Like on this little nut, you have to get it around. Right here is a spot it's likely to hit. In here, it's, it's bound to rub on metal when you're putting, putting a new blade in. Also this spring, this is my third one. I don't know why these springs keep breaking. After shipping, they're not real cheap to replace. I've had a lot of problems with this log stop. After using it for a while, it gets loose and it won't hold itself up. It just keeps flopping down. I tighten it up, then it works for a while, then it comes loose again. Wood Miser told me to try putting a ceramic nut on here. I haven't tried it yet. Hopefully if I do that, that'll solve the problem. Those are the things I don't like about the mill. Now, what do I like about the mill? It works great. Aside from those annoyances I've been talking about where I think Wood Miser could have just gone a little bit farther and made a much better machine, this thing works great. It makes great quality lumber. It's simple. There aren't a lot of parts to it. The engine, I can cut all day on a tank of gas, and I think it's only a gallon tank. Of course, I spend a lot of that time not running it, but doing all the things around it. Would I buy another one of these? The question is, would I buy this one, or would I buy one of the bigger, more automated mills? I've been debating on whether I want to upgrade. If I knew I was going to use this as much as I have the last couple of years, and if I knew I was going to continue using it that much, I would buy one of the bigger, more automated mills. But for someone who's not going to be using it commercially, not going to be producing a lot of volume, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend one of these. But Wood Miser, just fix a few things on here. You'll have a great mill. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Give me a like if you would. I'll see you on the next video.